Hey, what's up, YouTube? Lou Miles here. Back with another episode of LMJ Guitar. So, today, tonight, whatever, we have this Montana cutaway acoustic electric. You can see, there's the plug-in right, right there. Montana. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, it's a Montana. Sorry, my webcam was such a piece. But anyway, POS. It says Montana there. Um, this is a Chinese acoustic. See, so it's got tone and volume right here. And um, it's really beautiful looking. It's got. I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of got a top like a PRS. I don't know what you, I forget what you call that. Um, it's like a maple top, almost like a like a Les Paul. So anywho, um, this came in uh, for a repair. So the deal with this guitar um, is that it has fret buzz. So the um, the the strings the strings are too close. You probably can't see that, but the action is too low. Um, so one thing you can do about that. Um, as you might know, is a truss rod adjustment. So loosen the truss rod, and um, the neck is going to relax, or um, the neck is going to relax, and you're going to get more of a curve in the neck, and that's going to allow the strings. It's going to give the strings a little more space to clear the next fret from where you're fretting. So um, I'm just going to demonstrate the fret buzz. And you really hear it, you know, when I lay into the stroke, um, you can hear it buzz. Uh, it's really bad from like the fifth fret down is when you can really hear it. You can hear it, hear it on the high end there. So there's like a tinny buzzing, it's fret buzz. So that's one issue um, with this guitar. The other thing that's going on um, is that on the high side, you know, high in terms of pitch, not the bass side, but the other side, the treble side, the, um, the high E string is too close to the edge. Or whoever buffed or dressed or shaved the frets on the high side was too aggressive and if you imagine like um just take a drumstick sort of as an example if you imagine that this is the edge of the fret you know like on this drumstick there's an it's kind of sheer so you have, you know, the, it's, it's not sharp, so I'm not going to cut myself, but you have, there's room, you know, you can put a, you can have a, you can lay a string here and it's not going to slip off. But if you take something like, and the person who shaved the frets, um, did it pretty aggressively. And so they, the edge of the fret looks more like, like the edge of the top of this, these plier tips where there's like a bank there. And the problem is there's a couple frets where when you fret, the string is like right near this edge here. So it can just slip off. If you push down or if you do some vibrato, it could just slip right off. So I'm not gonna refret the guitar, obviously. It's a cheap guitar. It's not, it's not worth refretting. 
Um, so the only thing we can really do is either put a new nut on it to where this slot is more inset, which will, you know, bring the, the high E string a little further from the edge. So there's less chance it's going to slip off. But because this is, this is a cheap guitar and there's the customer's not really willing to put much money in, into the guitar, it looks nice and it sounds good, but it is a cheap guitar, Chinese-made guitar. Um, we can just move the nut over a little bit. Move the nut towards the bass side a little bit. And that's going to give a little more, you know, that's going to bring the string in and take and bring it away from the edge a little bit. The problem with that for me is, and for anyone who kind of cares aesthetically, is that, you know, if we're too, too cheap to get another nut, um, there's going to be a little space here. You're going to be able to see that the nut doesn't come all the way to the edge. Um, and then this would stick out a little bit. So I'm going to shave this down. Um, the customer doesn't really care either way. I mean, he's, he's a player. He's not a collector. He's not a snob. Um, so he's not going to care that there's some space that this nut doesn't come all the way to the edge and you can you, you'll be able to see you'll be able to see that because of the contrast of this wood stain and you know the off-white color of the nut but I can't stand having it stick out here so I'm gonna pop the nut out and I'm just gonna shave I'm gonna shave some of this off so that we can scoot it over just a little bit and um, that way the fourth It's going to take care of that problem, which is most, it's most problematic. I think the fourth, fifth, and maybe the eighth or ninth. This one's pretty bad. The ninth is pretty bad. It's like I can easily just, it very easily just slips off the fret on the ninth there. Oh, that eight, eight is pretty bad too. So what will happen is, if you want to do a little vibrato, so you want to do a little vibrato there. If you forget to only vibrato up, it slips right off. So we're going to take care of that by scooting the nut over, particularly the slot of the high E string. We're going to scoot that over. And uh, I neglected to mention we have room on the bass side. We wouldn't be able to do this if on the bass side, if if the string were precariously close to the edge, like on the high side, we wouldn't be able to do this. But you can easily see, I don't know, my webcam is a piece of junk, but um, you, can, you can see, I can see, that there's, there's a little wiggle room on the base side to where you can safely scoot it over and not create a new problem on the bass side to correct a problem on the high side and uh, I think that this is gonna be a cool guitar because it looks good and except for the fret buzz um, it's, re it's really hard to to tell that it's gonna sound good, but it is gonna sound good. Um, Cause I, I can just tell, and you know, I mean, a lot of cheap acoustics sound good, and it's just that guitar. You know, guitars have just gotten a lot better in some ways um, over the years, and you know, you can you can make a a nice guitar for cheap if if you uh, make it overseas, and you know, you have good uh, quality control and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, there'll be another video uh, after I take the strings off. Um, the other thing we're going to do is put um, heavier strings on it. I think it's got 11s or 12s. So we're going to put 13s on it. And naturally, you know, if a, if a string gets bigger, 
it's going to sit higher on the nut because if the you know if you have a V shape in a nut slot the um, you know a bigger string is going to sit higher and that's going to raise the action and give a little more breathing room for the strings when they vibrate which hopefully will help um, to correct you know the fret buzz so the plan is put bigger strings on loosen the truss rod a little bit <clears throat> and um, the other thing I didn't mention which we can do is you can replace the bridge with a taller one because the blanks that you get um, you know from these luthier sources luthier part sources you know they're blanks so they're tall and you just you just sand them down sand down the bottom until you get the height that you want so we can we can take up we can also raise the action on the bridge side but when just from experience when I look at the action I mean it's probably it's probably really hard for you guys to see but um, just from experience um, if you if you look at the action um, it's pretty good I mean it's I, I feel like it's pretty close to what it should be just based on my 30 plus years of you know playing and teching it looks it looks pretty much pretty close to what what it should be and with um, you know when you're working on the action on an acoustic you want to just do a little at a time um, because acoustics, you know, they're much less forgiving. Um, you can't, there, there's, there's nothing to adjust on the bridge. Well, not, I shouldn't say nothing, but there are no, there aren't saddles like on an electric that you can adjust. So you want to go easy. Um, unless you have experience and you really know what you're doing, you want to kind of go easy and just make little tweaks, you know. Um, because every time you change something, um, you know, you got to put relatively new strings on or new strings on and tune it up and see where you're at um, before you, you know, make another change. So if you if you do multiple things at once, it can be confusing as to what's actually going on. So you just, you know, have a strategy, do one thing, see what the impact is. And, you know, on cheap guitars, you can be um, a little more cavalier. Um, but you know it's good to get it right the first time if possible or just make improvements you just want to improve the guitar which with each step and then because w once you get the guitar dialed in sometimes you know depending on how much you play or the customer plays you don't have to do anything <laughs> except put new strings on and clean and you know clean the neck and the body you know clean the guitar keep it clean and put new strings on it Sometimes you don't have to do anything for like 10 or even 20 years if you don't play that much. Um, and it's in, you know, a, a house that um, is climate controlled. Not, well, I shouldn't say climate controlled, but, you know, like a house that's not drafty, that has central heating where the, or an apartment, whatever, where the, you know, the, the humidity, if you don't have a lot, you know, a lot of ch uh, changes in humidity um, or temperature, um, yeah, that's a pretty healthy environment for a guitar, and sometimes you don't, you won't need a neck adjustment for years. So anyway, um, this is getting a little long-winded. So once again, it's Lou Miles Jr. LMJ guitar. This is um uh, my my guitar tech uh, channel. I've been guitar teching for over thirty years, uh, off and on. So uh, yeah, I'll be back um, with this thing, hopefully um, playing and sounding good. Uh, so, catch you later.